If there's one thing that unites Sabs and Antis across the UK, it's their hatred of traps. Their social media sites have galleries dedicated to them. The photos showing what they look like after being tampered with or smashed to pieces in bizarre catalogues of criminal activity. They justify the destruction of private property by saying they are saving animals. Um, so to, to say that they're doing it for conservation and to say that they're doing it for animal rights is, is totally balmy. Um, so it's a shame really. Albert is making his Alarsen trap, one of the more popular designs. I started when I was young, young, sort of six or seven years old and used to make my own rabbit snares. Um, and uh, it sort of just developed from that. And then uh, when I started game keeping, sort of 14, 15 years old, helping out on a, um, a little DIY shoot. Um, I used to help make the traps there and uh, I do quite like the bit of woodwork, to be honest. So there's two sections to your Larson trap. You've got a catch compartment and you've got a, um, a call bird compartment. The general license says you can use these cages to catch these birds in accordance with the rules. And there are certain conditions that are on the license, such as providing a perch, providing food and water, checking them in accordance with the timescales. We've got quite a campaign on corvids. Um, there's been a grouse moor. We, we're totally reliant on wild stock. So our main, our main concern is the carrion krill. Um, they can have a, a real serious impact on not only our grouse, um, but all the red-listed ground nesting species that, um, that we have uh, here in the moors. So use these traps, control those numbers, uh, and that, that will help our, our red-listed species and our grouse. Larsen traps, you know, I'm old enough to remember when they first came in, they really were a revolution in how we trap and manage these, what people would call pest birds in the countryside. They're targeted, they're efficient, they're humane. This year, Antis going into the name Hunt Investigation Team have focused their angry online persecution campaign at gamekeepers on Moscow Estate in the Peak District. They revealed the identities of two gamekeepers and painted them as criminals for simply going about their legal daily duties, which includes checking their traps. What we have to remember is the traps are completely legal. The activities that they've been filmed doing are completely legal and lawful. They're not on the nature reserve, a claim that HIT makes uh, on a number of occasions. HIT's campaign hinges on it exposing criminal activity, claiming the traps are on National Trust land. They also claim police are investigating the gamekeepers. Neither of these claims is true, and according to the police, the only people investigated are HIT members for their illegal trap tampering, something they boast about online. Police have been involved. We are encouraging them um to be a little bit more proactive in the challenge of this activity especially illegal tampering of traps and the social media campaigns that have been um, taken on against these two youngsters the group complains about max uh you know checking his traps every day well he's doing everything that he should be He's doing nothing illegal, and yet he's been portrayed as some sort of person that isn't adhering to best uh, practice. People are, you know, putting death threats on. They're wishing him, you know, wishing them unwell, and you know, it's it's, it's awful. You know, it's sickening really to see what people are, are, are genuinely capable of. You know, and they're accusing us of being barbaric, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But actually, when you read some of the language that that they're using, some of the the phrases that they're coining, it's, it's disgusting. You know, it is absolutely shocking. Albert has experienced trap tampering at previous estates. We had a lot of young oak plantations. Um, so a big, big part of my job was trapping squirrels. Um, so I built numerous boxes to go in the trees. Um, you know, they, they were relatively inexpensive, um, but it was the time making them and uh, I could expect at least one or two a day um, to have been destroyed, tampered with. I had a, a couple of interactions with um, said trap tamperers. Um, well, they weren't polite to say the least. They always crave a, um, a bit of an argument. I tried to reason with them, tried to explain why we do what we do, but 
it's it's very very difficult to uh, to to speak to somebody when they're so sort of emotionally um, emotionally focused by their hatred for what we're doing. We all need to educate people who, who don't shoot to the benefits of conservation, but from a Larsen trapping point of view, so one of the practical things that, that Basque does, we produce a little sign that you fit to the Larsen trap, um, and it gives you all, it, in, a, in a, a very brief, concise way, it explains the trap is legal, it explains why it's being used uh, in accordance with the law, um, and the rules and regulations, and some of the benefits. After three hours' work, our trap is ready, and there's only one thing left to do: deploy it. Do you want him? Does he want to be on the perch? I think. Or wherever he's happy. We drive out to a corner of the estate where there's another trap that's not currently operating. So here we've got um, a multi-catch cage trap. This one, uh, this particular design, is a ladder trap. Um, it's just another form of uh, COVID trapping. Um, so when it's set, um, so during the springtime we'll run this trap. Um, this will be secured down uh, and the, the, the carrions, jackdaws and rooks, they'll use this uh, little bit of a letterbox opening, drop into the other call bird um, and hopefully we can uh, catch a couple in one go. Uh, but as we're, not, um, as we're not trapping, we've finished trapping, we're just preparing for the start of the season. Um, it's not set at the moment. We'd have water bottles set up and then we have feed trays for them. Um, we can use catch them using sort of like wheat, bread, um, maize, scatter that out, um, get them used to feeding, they'll come through this big top opening and then uh, when we're ready for a catch, we'll just close the lid like so and uh, secure it and we'll be ready to catch. We've brought our other traps out with us. Um, we're just going to leave them out now, get them set where we need them. Um, leave them unset for now, but uh, we'll let this new trap weather a little bit um, and hopefully just sort of dull off a little bit and uh, take on the colour of its surroundings. Try and catch some carrions next spring on the North York Moors and uh, keep our wildlife going. Grand. There are rules and codes of practices for traps in the UK. We've put links in the description below.